Hello, everybody, and welcome to the August edition of Aces All In. Alongside Nikki Pika, I'm Mike Stephenson here inside our Nevada Sportsnet studio. And I'll tell you what, my friend, where has the time gone? Another fun season is nearing the end. I mean, honestly, it's hard to believe that it's our second to last show of the year. Between major league call-ups, exciting wins at Greater Nevada Field, and a bunch of fun stories within the clubhouse, it's been a heck of a summer, as you would say. You can say that again. As for this month's installment of Aces All In, we have plenty to get to, including a a glimpse into the past as Reno honors the Silver Sox all season long. We'll also connect with pitching coach and 1990 Cy Young winner Doug Drabeck. Plus, do you ever wonder how the actual baseballs go from the package to a game? It's quite a process. But first, it was a little over two years ago when pitcher Tommy Henry got his call to throw for the Diamondbacks. Arizona was on the road in Cleveland, and coincidentally, so was Henry. I caught up with the lefty to talk about that moment and more. Like millions of kids, Tommy Henry aspired to be a major leaguer, but he didn't plan to pitch. I definitely had dreams of being the first left-handed shortstop in the big leagues. I wrote a paper in like fifth or sixth grade on why baseball should play half the innings going how we play it now and then half the innings where we run to third base like first base so that we need left-handed infielders. Though innovative, Henry's unlikely scenario would eventually lead him into the outfield and then onto the bump where the Michigan native Southpaw landed him with his favorite childhood program. I knew that Michigan was my dream school. I, I wanted the academics and um, there was just nowhere else I could picture myself. It was far enough from home where I had a little bit of separation in college experience, but close enough where if I needed to, I could drive home. After a run to the College World Series, Henry was drafted by Arizona 74th overall in 2019. Just three years later, he got the call up to pitch for the Diamondbacks on the road against the Guardians. Swing and a miss, and Tommy Henry has his first major league strikeout. Normally a peak moment in a pro ball player's career, Henry happened to already be in Cleveland, celebrating his brother-in-law's life after he died in a tragic car accident. It was such a weird mix of emotions because I'm here dealing with like a lot of emotions myself, a lot of emotions for my family. It's a loss that I think still affects all of us to this day. And then, you know, like arguably the best news of your life. Henry kept the phone call to himself until after the ceremony. Then he whispered the news to his family. I didn't want anyone else to have to like deal with this weird mix of emotions. Do you sometimes wish it was on a different day? Maybe a day before or a day after? Um, I mean, yeah, yes and no. Like it's a little bit weird that it happened that way. Uh, but no, because it didn't take me away from the moment of, of where I wanted to be for Cooper, for my family. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, all, I, I believe all that's, you know, God's timing. And so he had he had his hand in that and, and planned it to go exactly that way. Now with 35 major league appearances in 2024, Henry has split time with Reno and Arizona. He could grind it out. Uh, and, and I like that in pitchers when they're able to grind it out, knowing that maybe something's not going right. But being able to go through five, it may not be pretty, but you get through five and, you know, at least try to keep your team in the game. And that was one thing I noticed. He was able to to give you up until the last drop. Baseball throws a lot at you. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of success. There's a lot of failure. There's a lot of times where you can feel alone or lost um, and not really sure why things are going the way they are. And so I think all of that offers a chance for, for growth and for perspective changes and to really learn about yourself, to learn about life, all through what baseball offers you. In the unstable world of professional baseball, Henry and his fiancee Bree find daily peace through their adopted dog, Graham, who often spends time at Greater Nevada Field. He totally does that for me. You know, if I give up 11 runs or if I give up zero, like it's the same greeting at the door, um, whether we win or lose. Um, and, you know, I think over the course of a, of a long season where there's a lot of ups and downs, that stability um, is, you know, is really nice to have. It's fun. Um, and he just, yeah, he's, he's always there for you and offers you a different perspective. For Aces All In, I'm Nikki Pika, Nevada Sportsnet. 
Henry is posting a sub-3 ERA in the month of August alone, so he's hoping to get the call back to help the Diamondbacks for yet another playoff push. We'll have to see what happens. In the meantime, coming up next on Aces All In, this season the team honoring the biggest little city's past, celebrating the Reno Silver Sox. We're jumping in the time machine next on Aces All In. Welcome back to Aces All In. I'm Mike Stephenson. Longtime locals probably remember when the biggest baseball show in the biggest little city was the Reno Silver Sox. Now some three decades since saying goodbye, the Silver Sox have been brought back to Reno. Here is Nevada Sportsnet's Shannon Kelly. America's pastime has long been a staple in the biggest little city. There's just no other sports on earth that can make people feel as nostalgic as baseball does. This season, the Aces are paying tribute to Reno's rich baseball past. Suiting up as the Silver Sox, the area's original minor league team, founded in 1947. Playing as the Silver Sox once a week ju just brings it all together for the, you know, kind of past, present, and future uh, of the sport in Reno. It's cool to just be able to represent the history of Reno, represent the people that, you know, were here before us and played this game before us. I think all of that's important. Long before Greater Nevada Field, the boys of summer could be found at the 4,000 seat Moana Stadium. The first professional team to utilize the field was the affiliation of the New York Giants. It was the Silver Sox. It was a single A team that came out here to call Reno their hometown. You know, I just remember behind home plate, there was metal and kind of fanned out. And down the sides was just wooden bleachers. And the pool in right field, big yard. Kind of right in the middle of town, it was the place to be. When I was a kid, I lived at Moana at the stadium. I mean, we used to go to the snack bar for the bullpen and, and you know, all kinds of things. I mean, it was just, uh, it was, the ballpark was great, the atmosphere was great, and it was just, uh, you know, what we did the whole summer, and that's what made it so fun. In 1955, the Silver Sox joined Minor League Baseball's California League which produced dozens of major leaguers over the years. There was MVPs and superstars and Hall of Famers and that went through Moana Stadium. So I remember in the visiting clubhouse at Moana, they had a list of all the players that had come through there, and it was a who's who of baseball. They all stayed at the pepper mill, and they all, they all gambled, and they all talked about it, and they lost money. And then they'd go back the next, you know, it was just, it was just I, you know, you're a kid, so you're listening to these stories, but uh, they love coming in uh, to, 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 to Reno. Affiliated with several major league teams since its inception, Reno won five league titles. The Silver Sox are the only team in California league history to win back-to-back -back championships twice. From 1981 to 1987, the squad was renamed the Reno Padres. The Silver Sox name returned in 1988, but without an affiliation. On the team that season were Reno natives, John Savage and Jim Pace. I think I just went to the tryout. I got a call, uh, hey, you want to play your coach? 300 bucks a month, sure. <laughs> Independent baseball at that time was great because you all you did was play against affiliates. So people were watching, but in terms of me getting there, I, I was pretty much on my last leg in, in terms of my health. After the 1992 season, the Silver Sox relocated to California. In 2009, minor league baseball returned to the biggest little city when the Reno Aces were born opening a brand new stadium downtown. It's very difficult in this day and age, unless the market completely grows out of nowhere, um, for a place that never had minor league baseball to all of a sudden add it. So that, that history absolutely paves the way for what we're able to do here at Greater Nevada Field. I was so happy for the city and so happy for the community and the baseball people that they could, they could go grab a hold of a, a real team again. And, and, a real ballpark and a real organization with the Diamondbacks. More than 75 years later, the organization is being honored each Thursday night this season. 
We are not wearing an exact replica of any of the uniforms that they wore, but we took what we thought were the most identifiable features from the, the history of the Silver Sox um, to create a uniform that was uh, you know, lively and exciting and, uh, and still paid homage you know, properly to, to those that came before us. Bringing back the Silver Sox and the, the throwback Thursday jersey, the, you know, the old people from Reno that have grew up with them, it's really cool because baseball is a lot of history here. There's a lot of great players that come out of Northern Nevada. You know, not forgetting the team, I think, is really important. For Aces All In, I'm Shannon Kelly. I'll tell you what, those uniforms, mwah. There are just two chances left to see the Reno Aces transform into the Silver Sox Thursday, September 5th against El Paso, and again Thursday, September 19th against Albuquerque. So make sure you get on out to the park. Coming up on Aces All In, 34 years ago, he was baseball's best pitcher. Now he's digging in to help the future of Arizona's pitching staff. We feature former Cy Young winner and current pitching coach Doug Drabeck next on Aces All In. Welcome back to Aces All In. One of the staples of the Aces dugout comes in the form of six foot one Doug Drabeck. Although he isn't stepping onto the mound anymore, he shares his Cy Young knowledge with those moving through the ranks. Once again, here's our Shannon Kelly, who caught up with the Aces pitching coach. What have you liked out of your pitchers this season as we're more than halfway through the year? Well, Triple A is always interesting because you got guys going up and down, and then guys filling in, uh, you know, from the lower levels, but. Uh, I mean, the one thing I liked is uh, they've all, they know what's going on and they know what they need to do. And uh, as far as the attitude, uh, as for the core group has been good, uh, you know, because it's an easy spot to really feel sour about things when you kind of go up and down and you want to stay, obviously. But uh, for the most part, it's been, uh, they've been easy to work with. And that always helps when you're, trying to you know do some uh, different uh, tweaks to them and stuff like that where they buy into what you're saying and uh, they put the effort into trying to make it happen. As a former pitcher yourself, a Cy Young winner in 1990, I mean, when you look back to your playing days and you know some of the advice that you were given, what do you try and tell these younger guys that are coming up and down, as you mentioned, in the ranks and just trying to get to the big leagues? Right, I, you know, back then there, uh, all the technology wasn't around, so uh, it was basically figure out how to get out. That was the the main thing. Uh, and now with the technology and um, things that uh, they're expected to try to get to, as far as number wise, with uh, you know just different things, uh, it's a little tougher. So, and for me, um, you know, some of it is is helpful. Um, but I just try to try to get them to not rely on uh, black and white, you know, paper stuff all the time. Try to get a feel for what you're trying to do. Try to get a feel for when you're doing it, when you're not able to do it, and uh, uh, try to be able to make the fix on your own, uh, especially in game time. We recently mic'd up Blake Lawley on our Aces All In show, and you know he said he grew up idolizing you in Pittsburgh. You know, um, just you know, tell me about your relationship with him, and now that you've coached with him uh, for so long now. Right, I had him in Jackson for a year, and now this is a this will be the third year I've been with him, and uh, uh, it, it's been good. Uh, you know, he allows I think all his other coaches to do their job. Uh, he tries to keep everybody involved in decisions and stuff. You know, ultimately he's the manager and this has been for every level uh, forever that they are responsible. They're the ones that get the phone calls and stuff and we don't. And uh, But, you know, he allows for other opinions, ideas. And uh, but like I said, it, it, it's been good. Uh, you can just feel free to do your job and have fun. 
Over the last few years, the Aces have seen plenty of talent come through the bullpen. Three of Drebeck's pitchers have made their MLB debut with the Diamondbacks this season alone. Coming up on Aces All In, from package to glove, the minor league baseballs themselves go through quite a process before reaching the hands of a player. We'll show you that process next. California. Uh, Alaska. They're really far away. I don't know, dude. I don't know. That's tough. I, I don't know what to say. Eliminate one state. Wow. Brochero. Maybe Wyoming? I'll say Idaho. I don't know. <laughs> Nebraska. California. New Jersey. North Dakota. I love Montana. I like Montana. I go Montana. Montana. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I was lucky to start my career in Montana. Jose Herrera needs to put some respect on the Treasure State. Heck, he played there too. Anyways, whether knocked out of the park, thrown to a crowd member, or scuffed up in the dirt, there are a lot of baseballs used in any given game. But if you thought they'd just bust a new one out of the packaging and give it to the pitcher, you would be sorely mistaken. Nevada Sportsnet's Zach Larson chronicles the journey of a minor league baseball. Hey guys, we're here with visiting clubhouse manager Nick Marenberga, and he has a very special story to share with us today about how the balls at Greater Nevada Field are prepared before every game. Nick, walk me through the process. Where are we at first? So right now we're out in the, by the humidor. This is a big, important part of the process for getting the balls ready. Um, essentially, we go right in here. There will be a bunch of our balls here. There's probably about 2,000 balls in here right now. Um, we have to load this up on game on off weeks to get these ready to go. There's 12 here for each box. So total, I would say about 2,000 baseballs in here right now. Um, the process of the humidor is to keep these balls at a good rate and playable for game competition. All right, and let's go get the balls ready for the game. All right, Nick, we're outside the doors of the visiting clubhouse. This is kind of where all the magic happens. Okay. Uh, walk me through what happens next once the balls have gone through the hum humidor and now uh, you guys are prepping the balls for game day. Yes, so essentially when we do get the balls out to the humidor, they have to sit out there for the 14 days um, to make sure they're regulated, but then we will bring them back the day of the game. It has to be three hours prior to first pitch or after that they have to be rubbed up. So uh, we'll come back into here and our team will start rubbing up balls. Um, it'll take about an hour and a half total, if I had to say, uh, to get the 16 dozen balls um, properly rubbed. Yeah, essentially you're gonna wanna get a, a pretty good scoop onto your fingers out of that mud right there. That's the uh, black shear mud that we use for the balls. I usually like use my left palm or fingers to kind of like create a, like a, just a, dr a even drag through the white parts of the ball. I try to keep it to the point where I get a good, even, consistent, rub through the, the ball. When would you say it's done? So I would then like say if my my bat boys are like, hey, is this good? Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, it feels good. I would kind of give it a rub through yeah. myself to make sure that it's even. And then I'd say, yeah, we're good. Nice. There it is. A ball hopefully going to be used tonight. Sure That's will. Right. I'm tossing it in. <laughs> so once these balls are all ready to go in those ball bags, my bat boys will be delivering the balls. The umpire will hang up like five fingers. They need five balls. So uh, those ball bags will be in the dugout. Bat boys grab the balls, bring them out to the umpire. Well, Nick, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for showing us the process. We did actually catch up with a former Cy Young winner and a current Aces pitcher about the baseballs and their thoughts on the process. I think pitchers are really picky. And I think it's like a low hanging fruit sometimes for pitchers to like, oh, the balls were, were slippery or whatever. But you know, I think we're really lucky to have somebody out here who takes good care of our of our baseballs. The places where it's uh, kind of dry and stuff, I think that's more of a problem than the ball. Uh, just getting a good grip on the ball and stuff. But uh, it's equalized or neutralized uh, some of the stuff helping the pitchers out or making it equal, not helping them out, yeah. but just kind of equaling the level of playing field. 
Who would have thunk it, right? So next time you see a new baseball brought into the game, you'll know it's not exactly new, and you'll know exactly what it went through to get there. Coming up next, we wrap the month of August and highlight some big moments seen within the organization. That's next on Aces All In. Here's the 3-1. Del Castillo gives it a ride. Deep center. Way back. Way back and gone. It's a grand slam in Miami for the Miami rookie. Boy, the expression on Tori Lovello's face in that dugout. He is beaming down there. And the kid who handed out tickets to virtually all of downtown Miami just hit a grand slam out of here. And it's 4-0 Diamondbacks. That's catcher Adrian Del Castillo hitting a grand slam against the Marlins on August 19th in his hometown of Miami in front of family and friends. What a moment for the rising star in the D-backs organization after making his MLB debut on August 7th. Now time for our monthly accolades as we recognize the players who shined in the month of August. First up, our player of the month goes to shortstop Bryson Brigman. His monster month, including a 443 batting average, 671 slugging percentage, and a whopping 1.177 OPS. He led the team in RBIs with 22 and got on base just over half of his at-bats. Our pitcher of the month goes to a guy that you heard from earlier, Tommy Henry, the Southpaw pitching an impressive 2.2 ERA in his five starts while striking out 38 batters in 28 and a third innings of work. Also a quick shout out to Yabir Diaz, who once again struck out 13 batters, but this time on August 27th against the Isotopes, tying the franchise record for strikeouts in a single season game for the second time this season. And how about our performance of the month? In August, it goes to first baseman Tristan English. Not only did he have an insane month at the plate, on August 14th versus El Paso, the 27th year old racking up four hits, including a home run, two doubles and a single, falling just short of the cycle. All right, that'll do it for the August edition of Aces All In. Just one more month left to see the biggest Little Cities ball club in action. Reno's push for the postseason continues into September with a dozen games at home. So make sure to get out to Greater Nevada Field, and we will see you next month on Aces All In.